Greetings, grinders of Grinder School. This is the Carrot Man. I'm coming at you today with a live play 50NL on Poker Stars, the home of poker for the non US grinders. Playing some regular tables instead of Zoom today, um, just for something a little bit different. I've been playing a lot of Zoom with my live plays recently. Um, and yeah, I guess I want to talk a little bit about the sort of choice if you're lucky enough to play on one of these sites that offers fast poker like Zoom or Rush Poker or whatever they whatever they call it on the site where you play, then you're gonna have this choice between regular tables and Zoom. You might wonder, is it better to play Zoom? Am I gonna make more money that way? Am I gonna progress faster? Or is it better just to stick with regular games? Um, it very much depends on the quality of each type of game on your on your site and I guess also what kind of player you are. So I wanna talk about that a little bit initially just to start off this video while I make decisions. As always, in familiar style, I will be um, contradicting, my, contradicting myself, interrupting myself rather as I go to comment on the spots that are going on. This is a spot where um, I just elected to check back this flop. This guy's really tight, so he's gonna have more pairs in his range than most people are on this kind of texture. Um, there's definitely an argument for just starting the barrel here with like my whole range of c-betting everything here But I also think a guy like this is probably not going to be too difficult to play against in a turn He's going to sort of like continue checking when he doesn't have very much um, And bet when he has good hands basically for the most part obviously he signs a very clear showdown on the river There's no point in turning that into a bluff. So yeah Exhibit A I interrupted myself to bring you my wisdom on that hand. So let's get back to the my first topic here. I will have some other topics as we go, but let's start off with Zoom versus regular. Um, so first of all, what is the advantage of Zoom? Why might you want to play it? One, it's maybe more fun not having this downtime. Like right now you can see that nothing is going on in these tables. I'm just sitting running my mouth. You know, if I wasn't making a video, I would be literally wasting time. That would be working time that I am putting into trying to make money. And I wouldn't be making any money because nothing would be happening in that downtime. What Zoom Poker does is it completely eliminates that downtime. Um, this is kind of annoying with Jack Six suited here. I think I should just fold it. If this guy was just calling, I would definitely want to get into pots with him, but he's actually 3 betting like a crazy maniac. Um, I'll give you my other reads on him as they become relevant. So I just fold there. So. Yeah, there's this downtime with regular poker that you don't get with Zoom. Zoom speeds up the amount of hands you play per hour, and it can speed up your hourly earnings, but not necessarily. And the reason for that, I'm going to min open this because I don't want to, I'm going to have to fold this to 3-bet, and I lose less that way when I do get 3-bet. He's the kind of guy that you just have zero fold equity against, so it's kind of better just to, obviously we call here, it's kind of better just to see flops, try and make hands and things when we have marginal holdings before, like, bloating pots hugely, in my opinion. We can 3-bet him light. For value, we can open like stronger hands in Queen 10, but when we have speculative hands that we want to connect with first, probably best to give ourselves a better price A to see the flop and B to lose less money if we have to fold to three bit there out of position. So zoom is good because you get more volume, sure, but your hourly might actually be lower. Um, it might not be any better playing zoom despite the fact you have more hands per hour because your win rate, that's your BB per 100 as it's called, could actually be substantially lower playing Zoom. Now this will depend on how soft the Zoom pool is compared to the regular pool. And I have found a lot more fish in the regular pool than I have in the Zoom pool at this time of day for whatever reason that is. I'm not really sure at 50 and 100 NL anyway. Um, so compare the pools in your sites. How do they you know, tag the players? Go in with the old tagging system, tag the regs if, as and when you see them, tag the fish as and when you see them, treat unknowns as fish if you regulate the games at that time and haven't seen someone before. See how many unknowns and, re and fish you're getting versus the normal regs. See how regulated the games are. Um, I'm going to just see about this because this guy is pretty straightforward and is probably not going to get out of line or punish the fact that I have a strategy that is c-betting too much here so I can get away with c-betting exploitably often basically. I'm going to call this because it's too good to fold against a bad player who I'm going to have a huge skill edge against after the flop. If I close my browser that Facebook notification will stop coming up and that will be nice for everybody. Um, yeah so there's another reason why you might have a much higher BB per 100 at regular tables as well and that's you can table select so if you have a decent amount of games running at your stakes the just sheer ability to be able to table select there is going to be really good for you 
Um, you're going to be able to make sure that you play with fish more often, you're on the right side of fish, you're on the right side of aggressive players, all that kind of thing. Here's an interesting spot here. Okay, that did not solve the problem. Quitting the browser completely did not stop Facebook from popping up in my face every two seconds. How tilting, I'm going to tilt a stack off that. Um, so, so yeah, that's the trade-off. You have to figure out how soft the pool is and if you are actually, because if you've got loads of juicy games running at regular tables, you're going to be at liberty to actually really multiply your win rate maybe by three, four, or five times what it would normally be playing Zoom. Um, if, if the games are that great and the Zoom games are really bad, that's like a huge, drastic kind of um, overestimation there. This hand is kind of gross. Like, I raised the flop. He has a lot of over pairs in his range. I really believe this is now just a check back and a fold to any future bet because I don't think he's going to randomly bet kings or aces on the river. And that's most of his range. He does have queens too, which is like a third of his range, slightly less right now. He also has some sets, like set of jacks and some flush draws. I don't think there are enough flush draws for me to worry about checking back and getting bluffed. Some of those flush draws even contain queens, which means that they also beat me. So this is a clear check back and then fold to, especially now that kings also gets there. We just have to hope he checks, we check back and he has aces. That's really the only good thing that can happen here. Or he has the busted flush draw and decides not to bluff it, which, I don't know, could be a mistake. Um, I think I'm probably folding a hell of a lot when I tell him that I, okay, I could have a queen, I could check that. That turn with a queen is definitely possible, so maybe I can't hate on his refusal to bluff there too much. Um, aces, I don't even know what happened. I squeezed, that's what happened, right? Okay. Um, this spot, if I bet eight here, in a situation like this where the stacks are going to go in um, imminently, you want to just figure out what bet size achieves that the best. Because I don't have the ace of diamonds, I actually want to do this over two streets instead of three. Um, so if I bet eight, if I bet like nine then I'm going to leave 37 into a pot of, okay, I screwed that up, into a pot of, no I'm not, I'm going to leave like 36 into a pot of 32, which is okay for me. This turn is not very good, but what can you really do? It's I'm still going to get it in. Can I get it in better by not shoving here? And by instead, like, I don't know, doing something else? I don't really think so. I think if he has like under pair with a diamond or king x, he's still going to be stacking off here. Pretty much all the time, seems like a random weaker player, so I just select the shove. But yeah, I screwed up my flop sizing there, I should make it bigger, close to the pot so I can just shove the turn. The other option is to go small, 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 which I would do if I knew A, that my opponent was a really weak fish, and I could just make his calling range stupendously huge by going small, 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 or B, if um, I had the ace of diamonds or the board was drier and there weren't so many turn cards and river runouts that could A, kill my action, or B, make my hand no longer good. So that's my reason for two streeting, two street planning that instead of three street planning that a six should just be a full tier, especially with a sky three betting that's in position to us all the time. Wow, lots of action, lots of ranting. I like it. It's good um, lingual and mental exercise when I get to run my mouth at like a thousand miles per second. That's what it's like when I coach you. That's why you have to record the sessions because sometimes I will give you a lot of information in one hour and you will have to record so you can actually comprehend everything that's going on. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll slow down if you want me to articulate things a bit better or if you're not understanding, of course, but the more we can cram in, the better. Same for videos, same for coaching. I like it when this happens and I get to sort of flex my mental muscles, so to speak. Um, so going back to the Zoom versus regular debate that I was just having with myself, I think that oftentimes people underestimate just how much your win rate suffers playing Zoom compared to normal tables. I think in these games it wouldn't be unreasonable to have win rates like 10 big blinds per 100 and things like that if your table selected well and had a big edge, which I believe I have. Um, whereas in, in the Zoom pool you're just really never going to get that kind of edge because you're going to be in realist situations far more frequently. You will not have as many exploitative adjustments at your disposable. Disposable? What the hell? This is the problem when I talk too fast, sometimes I just mess up the grammar of my language. So you will not have as many um, exploitative adjustments at your disposal. You'll be more inclined to just be going based on your sort of strategy, your GTO strategy, but tailored to your population, not like pure GTO. But you'll be more in the kind of balance, the realms of balance against the regulars when you don't have good reads on them than you will be otherwise. And like I said before, you won't be at liberty to select as well against fish and get on the right side of all the whales and keep playing when there are whales at the table. Like when there's a whale at your table in regular stakes, that's just so valuable that you play every single hand against him, not like 1 in 60 or however many 
tables divided by your entries there are in the zoom pool. Here we are in a limped pot with jack 10, it's almost good enough for me to have just isoed this guy or raised this guy pre-flop and that probably would be the best play actually given that he seems kind of like straightforward as played I'm just going to lead out and continue betting for value on this turn. I pick up more equity, he improves sometimes as well, if we get raised it's going to suck but we definitely have the best hand off enough to just keep betting. River's not the best in the world. Um, Check calling is an option, but there aren't that many draws at Brick. You're only talking about club draws. Um, he could randomly bet like 9x or something. I think this is a decent spot just to make a blocker bet and fold to a race. Just make a small value bet. Try and get caught by like 6x, 9x. Ah, oh, killing me, fish. And the min raise here. Like, I'm actually just going to. I'm getting like such an absurd price. 250 into 15 means that I need to be good. Like, you're talking like. Oh, it's just some. Yeah, like 14% of the time. I don't think I am good 14% of the time, so I'm actually going to fold. Just do a little bit of on the fly math there. It feels gross, of course, to fold in that spot, but I really think that my um, my equity there is going to be less than 10%. I just don't think a fish is ever a min bluff raising like a random third pair or a missed draw there. If he is, it's like 5% of the time or something, like nowhere near often enough to call. Even though I need like no equity, I just have no equity either, so you know what to do. I just don't have that 14.7% equity. What can I say? Uh, I can fold Queen 8 there. I don't need to fold that way to defend. So, yeah, don't dismiss regular games. Zoom are really f is really fun. It's really fast and frantic, and it does save you a lot of downtime. And if you've got a... It depends what kind of player you are as well. If you've got a good zoom pool that's full of fish, then it could be the way to go. However, if you prefer the conventional... Um, gathering reads, um, exploiting your opponents and going from there, then you probably want to consider the good old fashioned regular tables and you may be playing on a site that doesn't offer the zoom option anyway. King Jack suited just in my 4 bet range here, it's a little bit too weak to flat but it's got two good blockers and it's suited and it's just definitely going to be a 4 bet. If I'm not 4 bet bluffing this then it's hard to know exactly what hands I am 4 bet bluffing in this spot. There are some guys against whom you just don't want a 4-bet bluffing range there at all. This guy, I don't know enough about him yet to think that he's one of them, or he could turn out to be someone who just doesn't 3-bet bluff very much there. Um, it remains to be seen, but as default, I want a 4-bet bluff range there. I want to be balanced of sorts, so I'm going to start by 4-betting King Jack suited. I don't believe that it's good to flat many 3-bets that are out of position at all. In fact, the strategy I play, I tend not to. It might differ when you're hijack against button a little bit, but generally speaking, when I have a wide range that I just I'm gonna to struggle to defend by flatting it, I just prefer to adopt a strategy of just four betting everything I'm playing small. Um it's kind of exploitable and the it's an exploitative strategy. Me and Carl talked about it in our video um last week. It's an exploitative strategy in that people could start jamming over me really wide. I just don't believe that's happening, so it's a means to me exploiting the population, exploiting the player pool in these games. So Zoom is not just about where you have the highest win rate um, or where you have, well it is about where you have the highest hourly deciding whether or not to play Zoom but another kind of important point is that I've got two options here, I can check call and get into unknown territory or I can just see bet and then check full turns, I'm going to go for the latter I think that if I see bet and get called here and then check the turn he bets I'll be in pretty bad shape and I think that people will just fold here a bunch and won't get too out of line and I'll just find out where I'm, I hate that expression, find out where I'm at, but it's probably the surest way to never make a mistake in the hand, or to very rarely make mistakes in the hand. <clears throat> if I start checking, I have no idea what these frequencies are for betting, um, I don't know how many streets I should be calling down with, and I just think this will be a better route to maximising EV in this hand. So Zoom, choosing whether to play Zoom or not is also going to depend on the kind of <clears throat> player that you are. Do you favour having balanced strategies, or do you favour um, exploitation and deviating far from balance, noticing, observing, seeing what your opponents, your population, the player types are doing, the individual villains are doing wrong, and then looking to just exploit that. I just bet folded this river here because I think that it's thin, but I think that when he checks back turn it weights his range somewhat towards underpairs, and I think he'll never fold a boat on the river even though it's a terrible one, and I think that if he raises he just has an ace all the time, so I think that's a pretty easy bet fold for me on the river, although check folding could be another option. So yeah, do you like formulating good balance strategies? Where you just know your ranges are all in sync and knowing that you're playing solidly against regs, is that your thing? Um, I would kind of say that 
the definite article style, what you'll see him talk about in his videos is very much down that line. He's very much someone who favours balance first and foremost and um, excels in having very good, well preconceived ranges and strategies against his population. Whereas I think I do that as well. I mean, it's not that he does all of one thing and I do all of the other, not at all. There's a lot of crossover. Um, but I'm probably more on the the side of the spectrum of making lots of exploitative adjustments wherever I see fit and just doing things a little bit less um, based on a preconceived strategy, although I do have one in many situations as in where I see it necessary. I'm going to squeeze King 9 here. Um, this fish is weak. I don't really fear him at all. He might call. I don't really mind. He might fold. And I think the regs range is weak here when he doesn't 3-bet the fish. And King 9 is just at the top of my um, kind of not-so-happy flatting and playing a three-way pot out of position there, although it's probably a plus EV. I'd just rather squeeze there. I think it fits better into my squeezing range. Whoa! Just brought up a load of random pictures. <laughs> and horrible pictures there. It's like like a kind of horror show. Brought up like a picture of a horrible blister I got from playing badminton like years ago. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's like, yay, drunk girl, foot blister, random pose with girlfriend, all kinds of all kinds of stuff for your amusement there. I mean, you go back and pause the video and look at that that lovely collage. Maybe that's something you'd want to do. Probably not. I don't really see why you would. But anyway. King 9. Uh, I'm just going to complete. I think it's slightly too weak to isolate out of position. If we were in position, I would just isolate this guy in a heartbeat and expect to do well enough with my added post-slot fold equity from being in position, plus other benefits of position. As it is, I don't really think that it's going to be good enough. This is going to be a 4 bet too, because it's a little bit too good for me to fold. I'm not quite happy flatting it. He just goes ahead and, like, insta. I'm going to bet flop shove turn here, because I think I can get more fold equity that way. I could go for a check raise, but I don't think he has air very often in this texture at all, so I don't think I make him fold very much air. I'm just going to bet flop and shovel the turn with all this equity. I might not have loads of fold equity here, but I'll have enough plus my pot equity for this to be plus EV in a 4 bet pot, I think. Snap calls flop for this turn, that's definitely something we want to know. This is the kind of thing that you're going to get to use a lot in regular tables, not so much in Zoom, because in regular tables you know this guy's always going to be there to your left, so it's very important to gather reads on him and exploit him specifically. In Zoom the same kind of holds true for the whole pool, because you will play against the regs very frequently, but you can be assured that in regular tables you will play the next however many hands against this player, where you don't have that short-term assurance in Zoom, so it's definitely very different. So yeah, I think my line there is better than the alternative, which is actually to check the flop and then ship over a bet. The reason I think it's better is that he is not going to have air there because he's either going to have like an ace or a queen or he's going to have a pair. If he has like jacks or something, I doubt he's going to just start blasting at that flop. Um, it's just a disaster for me if like jacks gets to showdown somehow against me. Um, it's just horrible. So bet flop to fold out all those hands that are actually, you know, have 50% equity against me and will beat me in times when I don't improve and also set up stacks so I can actually get stronger hands like king queen suited, queen jack suited, ace jack, whatever to fold by the turn. So definitely prefer bet flop shove turn there. That's definitely the best line. It's the nuts. So these games are pretty soft as you can see. This is a Friday lunchtime in the UK. It's not like peak time at all and the games are still like pretty good. So um, I'm confident that this pool is actually a lot softer than Zoom, as such I've been playing I've been playing it of late. Um, we get 3-bet really small here, I think his sizing is just so small with these stacks that 6 is, I should have a flatting range, I wouldn't normally against bigger sizing, but against this sizing I do want a flatting range, he's convinced me. Um, this sucks, this guy's probably full of shit here relatively frequently, I mean what's he really repping? Like 6s, 4s, oh man I want to like throw in a 3-bet bluff so badly, it's like an exploitative thing obviously. Um, ah, it's the power of min raise that scares me. If you just straight min raise, they'll be more likely to have fine when they make it two and a half times. That they're actually way more likely to have something. That's my kind of population read on random fish. So there you go. Hopefully that's useful. And yeah, that spot like I don't normally have a flatten range there, but he makes it so small. He's giving me a great price. I'm slightly deeper than usual at 120 deep. Um, I can I need to have a flatten range for that against that sizing. Although I wouldn't against like 3x there probably. So I have a set mines become profitable. A lot more hands become like clearly profitable calls. It may struggle to be that plus EV otherwise. 
I don't think there's anything wrong with having a strategy where you do have a flattening range that could be okay. It's just the way I've been tailoring my ranges recently. I think it's a good strategy to exploit the population. It's again, it's not like a balanced strategy at all because it equates to me for betting a lot more than it would be a balanced strategy. Um, this is a good spot for us where we flop a lot of equity and he just starts leading. There's no reason to raise here. You have showdown value, you have good equity. You want him to continue spewing when your equity improves. So it's a clear call as it's the turn. River will be going into the tank and deciding if he blasts all three streets. I might call River as well, honestly, just because like he's going to show up with random like 7x and stuff like that. The fear is here that he shows up with like 6x and just like owns me. <laughs> it's like kind of annoying. It can happen. This could be a fold, but he's like a random fish. Uh, honestly, I don't feel too great about folding, get, getting 3 to 1, only needing 25% equity to call. So yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Like, I just expect his range to be a huge, sprawling myriad of like different hands here. Like, you're going to see top pair on the flop, you're going to see queen x, you're going to see 4x, you're going to see 7x, 3x, random bust aware. You're going to see even 9x and weird stuff like that. It's just a case of when you face these action closing spots, as I call them, this is how I teach my students these kind of spots, you need to first think, how much equity do I need to call? That's the first question. Because if your thought process starts spiraling into the realms of, oh, I shouldn't have potted that, I meant to just bet a dollar, that's okay, I should still take it down loads. I should just bet that turn for value, I don't really know why I didn't. Oh, your men raised me. Okay, I call this time just because your line is so bizarre. Now you have 10x. Nice value men raised. Sorry, well done. I should have bet the turn there. I have no idea why I didn't. His flop call is like atrocious, obviously. Yeah. Turns an easy value bet there. And protection bet. So things like 10 deuce don't get there on the river, I guess. So, what the hell was I just saying? Yeah, so the way to analyze these spots, this sucks, um, and I should probably be raising a little bit smaller here because I kind of have to fold to this with Queen Jack out of position. If I had a slightly stronger hand, I'd definitely call. His range is by no means tight, but it's just I have a kind of reverse implied odds laden hand out of position. I'm going to fold deuces. He's not 100 deep, and he's 3 back me too often for opening deuces there to be any good under the gun at a re otherwise reg infested table. So you see the bet, and you say, how much equity do I need to call here? That's the first thing. If you go into it, the realms of saying, oh, his line, his line is this, his line is that, he thinks I think, that he thinks I think, you're just thinking nonsense, just stop it. First of all, how much equity do you need? Because if you only need 20%, then your brain's instinct that you're not good more than half the time, which will be your subconscious kind of inkling is that you'll need to be good half the time, it's usually false, that's the pot's totally empty when your opponent bets. Um, then if you go down that route of just getting yourself into all this random meta game that you don't really know, thinking about your opponent's range too hard before you've even worked out your acquired equity, you're just going to make mistakes, you're going to make lots of mistakes. This is a hand I could conceivably 3-bet, but I'd rather double block your hands in that situation. Um, so, yeah, you're just going to get into a mess, and you're going to make loads and loads of errors where you're like folding when you only need to be good a fifth of the time and are clearly good like a third of the time, or calling when you actually are good almost never. Um, so first of all, just determine how often you need to have the best hand, and do that by milestones of if someone bets a pot, pot size bet, you need 33% equity. If someone bets half pot, you need 25%. If someone bets a quarter pot, you need 17%, etc. Um, and then just have a look at your opponent's line, the board, your relative hand strength. Do you think you have that much equity? I don't think I'm good super often in that hand where a hero called the third pair or whatever, fourth pair or whatever it was. I just think I'm good more than a quarter of the time, and that's all I need to be good to call a half pot size river bet. I think I'm good maybe like a third of the time there, but it's a clear call if I'm good a third of the time. Don't let your brain's instinct, which will tell you you need to, you need to have the best hand like half the time or whatever, don't let that instinct cause you to make loads of mistakes. This guy checks this flop to me. Um, I'm going to bet for value and protection here. I really just think that, oh wait, am I under the gun opener? Yeah, okay, I'm talking nonsense. I just see bet. I'll see bet everything here. Um, if this was blind versus blind, I would bet here because people are just check folding too often when they check these situations. As it is, I see bet my whole range on King 6 4 there under the gun against big blind. My range is just strong. There's not much you can do about it. I don't want to give free cards and I don't want to um, get into loads of guessing game situations with marginal hands in the turn. I don't want to have to check strong hands in my range in order to protect the marginal hands. So it's much easier, in my opinion, just to go ahead and see bet your whole range there. It should just be a completely crushing strategy. Uh, 
oh man, it feels good to be at the live play again and just be talking loads. I like this uh, regular tables for live play videos as well because when you're in Zoom, I'm just hitting fold all the time and I just always have a spot to talk about and I can't like get in any good filler content. I like filler content. It makes me happy. So that's me covered the kind of Zoom versus normal tables. Are you a balanced guy? Are you an exploitative guy? Which should you play? How are the tables on your stakes? Which are softer? Um, do you have scope for table selection? Do you not? I could make a presentation video about it, but I don't really think it's worthy of that much coverage. Clear fold with King7 here. You just cannot be opening too wide against a guy that's going to be 3 betting the hell out of you and making life. He's basically making the situation um, such that I need to show down value to play against him post flop. So opening hands that very rarely flop good showdown value like King7 off and it's going to be really bad because when he calls he's going to be like donking at me three streets, he's going to with bottom pair like we saw, he's going to be three betting me way too often, um, that kind of thing. Eights here, I'm just checking back. Um, I think I see about this board enough that my checking range is sufficiently strong that I can just fold eights on this turn should he lead. And it's a mistake to bet this turn because he can still have better hands like weak, weak ace x, queen x, etc. Um, if he leads this river, I think I'm just going to fold eights and call like queen x, basically. Because he could be value betting like king queen or something. I block that with queen x. It's a much better hand to call with. Um, but as it is, I probably just win here. He just doesn't. I think it's a mistake for him not to bluff at that at any point with nine high. That's like so close to the bottom of his range. He has a back there flush draw on the flop. I think he should bet the flop. I or at least maybe check back the flop and bet the turn, or if he doesn't bet the turn, bet the river. He needs to bet somewhere. He needs to filter that hand into one of his ranges that bet somewhere. He can't have that in his check all the way down. He should have no zero showdown value hands in his check all the way down range there. I don't think there are places to stab there. He should have some full equity. I don't know, unless he has a read that I just always see bet air, which isn't too far from the truth, but it's not the whole truth. I do check back there sometimes. This guy is not full stack, so I don't want to three bet and polarize, so I'm just going to fold here. I'm going to 3-bet him linear instead. This is a call, this is a fold, because again, this guy is making life hard. I need to tighten up a bit on this table. It's not a very good seat, actually, being to the right of this guy. I'd much rather be on his left. Flat 7s under the gun against... Uh, big blind against under the gun. This guy's c bet 79, so I'm not going to fold this flop if he bets. I am going to call... Pretty standard, I think. Especially with the seven of diamonds, if I didn't have that, I would just probably check fold the flop. Ace king here. Um, it's cut off. I think I didn't value bet this flop. Honestly, I think this hand is just good enough that it should be in my betting range. Like he doesn't have pairs that often here. Now I'll check back this turn and just go short and bound. That's not the best turn. It does hit some of his flop peels, like um, king queen, ace queen, if he has it. And he bets. Um, I have seven x here that I can call with. What is this hand like for blockers? It does block ace, queen, king, queen, which is good. Um, how light is he value betting? I'm going to call here. I think this is a call, just about. It depends how wide he's value betting. If he's value betting like all the pairs in his range, then or most of them, then it's probably a bad call. And yeah, you know, it might be a fold because I do have a lot of stronger hands. There. I do have seven x, and I don't know, kind of close. He's making me call quite often there with the sizing though, so. What is going on here? We open under the gun. Big blind donks at us on this flop. I'm I don't know if I even have a raising range here to be honest. This is incredibly strange. I'm just gonna start out by calling. Turns a standard call here, river's gonna be a fold. It's just that part of my range that's good enough to call twice, not call three times. I could have not flushes here, I could have queen high flushes. Um so yeah, I'm not folding too much of my range on this river. But sevens is clearly a fold. But I shouldn't fold a flush on a turn because I have so many non flushes when I call that flop as well. I have some showdown value here actually against other missed draws, so there's just no reason to be raising at any point on table one. Very weird that this guy donks three streets, it's just bizarre. Or two streets. This is a check back, I have enough showdown value here not to bluff ace high because all the missed draws I'm ahead of basically. Um, and yeah, if he was donking King X, he's never folding it now in this river, he's like check calling. That's like one hand I can make fold, this play is just makes no sense. I'm just going to note that he's got a really air-heavy, ridiculous donking range in that situation. Maybe he thought he was pre-flop Razor or something like that. I 
I mean, that's one of the hands that actually has some showdown value. It's probably like <clears throat> up there with some of the worst hands that he could dunk there. Dunking for two streets with that hand, it's just absolutely weird from a range construction balance point of view. It's pretty horrible strategy wise, and it's pretty horrible vacuum EV wise as well, I would say. I don't know, maybe he's just doing things that people aren't used to seeing, and maybe they're playing badly against it. Who knows? Uh, King 5 here. I think my hand's a little bit too weak with these stack sizes to call. If this guy was like 100 deep with me, I think I could justify it, even though my position's really horrible. So price is good. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, this hand is just a case of, it's a spot where we don't know what our opponent's range is. <coughs> and we are pretty much playing our range here. We're just kind of... Calling sevens on the flop because it's too good to fold, calling on the turn because it's too good to fold, folding it on the river because it's too bad to call. Um, that's kind of how it works. We have, if you think about the rest of our range here, we're playing in a balanced way. What that means is that if our opponent is over bluffing that river or under bluffing that river, it doesn't really matter. This is marginal with these active guys ahead. This could even be a fold, but this guy's a fish, so I want to play pots with him. As long as he's not going to 3-bet me. He might not 3-bet as much as that looks like because it's early days. Clear check here um, to get the fish to bluff. It looks like an aggro fish, get him to bluff and pot control middle pair. Spot red just want to bet huge because he's just going to call with like anything like diamond X hands and all kinds of crap. So I think it's just a clear, clear pot sized bet spot. Maybe I could even over bet that turn. <clears throat> so he doesn't know what our range is. We don't know what his range is. Um, we're kind of just playing in a way that makes us immune to whatever he's doing. It doesn't really matter if he's over bluffing three streets there, or under bluffing three streets there, because <clears throat> the upshot is that we are playing in a balanced way, so we are folding, we're only, if he bets pot on that river, right, he needs us to fold 50% of the time to break even. Um, we are probably folding, like, he bets under pot, so we need to be calling a little bit more often than that, um, but we're very <clears throat> low down in our range. Which means that if we fold sevens, that doesn't mean the seven high flush. It doesn't mean that we're folding anywhere near half of our range because most of our turn calling range is a flush, and sevens is about as bad as those flushes are going to be. So, point is that we're calling a lot of hands there on the river, just not anything that bad. It's also kind of hard for him to have air <clears throat> on the river there. I've been totally speaking myself out and haven't prepared any water, which is a mistake. I will survive. It's hard for him to have air because when he bets, like, I don't give Regs credit for, like, just barreling total air or turning, like, weak pairs into bluffs there on the turn. They should do it. They should turn some hands into bluffs on that turn that aren't flushes, but they generally don't. Um, so the upshot is that they either have showdown value and check back, or they've hit their draw with their not flush draw and are going to be betting. So, in actual fact, against the population, I think I should be overfolding the river there, not underfolding. So, sevens is just, like, not even close. Hope that makes some sense. Kind of advanced concepts, I guess, but these are things you guys should definitely be thinking about if you're playing as high as 50 NL, without a doubt. You need to be these days. I don't for a second buy all this shit about just play like a net and beat the micro stakes. Maybe if your games are horrendously easy, but on stars, like if you play 25 NL on stars, you're not going to beat 25 NL by playing like a net. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. Not these days. Jack-10 is too weak to defend here, it's like the bottom of my opening range, um, same plan. Another guy that's kind of unfortunate to have him on your direct left, because he's going to make life a little bit annoying for you. It's quite aggro, he needs the active reg tag actually. This is my tagging system. Um, I start off with standard reg and standard fish, these are the two most common tags I use. Then if someone's active, I know I don't want to be on their right, that's active reg, I'll use that info accordingly. Then I've got inbat aggro, which means imbalanced in the direction of being aggro. Inbat dick wave means like just sort of alpha male. Probably heard that expression, it's a little bit crude before. Um, people are just kind of flailing around, being like, I am man, I am man. Um, if he's one of those regs that's imbalanced in that way, then you know, cool. King queen here against a 19 at 10 kind of close spot. I'm going to bet the turn. I think I've got some fold equity against hands like, like I think I can get like 10x to fold by the river. I've got loads and loads of equity um, and I can get like ace-queen to fold now, king-queen to fold now, maybe you're on the river, ace-king to fold now, maybe you're on the river if he has that. Uh, this is a clear three bet. It's like, what the hell characters? How can you just claim jack-five suited as a clear three bet? Because 
I want to pull the range against a guy that folds way too much. It's not that, it's not that complicated, guys. I want to pull a range here because this guy folds way too much. So I want like tighter value range and then loads of bluffs. And Jack Five is slightly too weak to flat, in my opinion, to the open, although it's not far off a flat. Therefore, it's a clear, clear three bet bluff. It's not characters going crazy, gone insane, and wants the three bet Jack Five suited. It's it's a clear three bet. It just it's logically. Characters doesn't go insane. Characters is composed as ever. Immune to tell. That's not true, unfortunately. No one is immune to tell, I don't think. There are plenty of um, horrible downswingy things that can happen that you can see me tilting my, my nuts off in a video. I might hide it from you, but inside I'd probably be tilting like crazy. This guy is slowly bustling his roll. I say his roll, his roll and his stack are probably the exact same thing here. No offense, sir. If you're a grinder school member, pretty sure you're not. San Miguel beer, nice. What is this? Why is this illuminated? Okay, I have a note on this guy without player typing him. Okay, back to the player types. It's a good filler topic. So, Imba deck wave is guys that are really unbalanced. Guys that are like four betting, like 180 combos of bluffs and 40 for value or something because they don't know how to structure their range, which is why you should definitely structure your ranges in these common pre flop situations. We also have Imba Tight and Imba Knit and Knit. So Imba Tight is a reg who is exploitable in the sense that he's too tight. So against Imba Tight, you want to be opening up your stealing ranges, you want to be C-betting more and expecting him not to punish you, you want to be value-betting less and bluffing more in general. Against Imba Knit, even more the case, although you don't want to bluff when he has like the nuts, obviously. When he's not folding, he probably has nuts, you just want to like steal a bunch of pots in the earlier streets against them. Um, rather than the later streets. Then we have, we go into the realms of Fish World. Yay, Fish World is the best world to be in, of course. It's kind of an impractical filler topic because it involves me um, constantly bringing the window away to make a decision. Standard Fish, one I don't know anything about, or a fish that hasn't defined himself in any obvious direction of sub-fishness. Then I have FOF Fish, which means fit or fold. This is the kind of guy you want to ISO with like any two cards in position as long as regs aren't punishing you for it ahead of you. The kind of guy that you want to like see bet 100% against. The kind of guy that's just going to limp, call, and then fold in the flop, or limp and then fold pre-flop or whatever. I'm going to see about 100 percentiles of my range on this board because that's too big actually, go like 125. Because um, he's not going to be able to do anything about it. Again, it's just going to be tough for him to do much. Um, I think this is a clear check back. And that river kind of sucks. I do have some kings if he bets I could call with. Um, I just tried to decide what I would have done if he bet here. This is a clear check. Um, I lose to a three sometimes, or I will lose like sixes, or I will be ace ten. Or ace six. He has a lot of ace high here, so it's very easy to play against people in this spot. Like, what's he doing there? Just calling one. So when I have deuces, I check back because I beat his ace high. When I have like weaker hands, I have some equity to barrel with, I just bet. Um, although his call's not bad or anything, because I mean, I am going to be... His call's not bad in theory, because I am going to be C-betting like 100% there, but it's it depends how willing he is to call turns as well, because if he's not going to call any turns there, he's going to lose a lot of money against me, because I'm going to barrel that turn very, very often when I don't have showdown value. So in theory, his play is good, but he needs to actually be calling the right amount on the future streets as well, and I suspect based on my knowledge of the population, he's just simply not going to be doing that. This is another 3-bet. It doesn't have to be, but like if I 3-bet 6-5 off, I'm probably 3-betting a lot, and I did just 3-bet him recently, so you could make an argument for just folding that hand, but I think it's a good 3-bet based on the fact that he's just folded every time so far and hasn't been so active. Nothing to do against the 4-bet, but fold, unfortunately. See, bet's a little big here, but I think it's okay. Um, clear barrel again on the turn for value. There's no reason to slow down here. I might even bet three streets against a guy that doesn't like the fold on that river. I certainly will bet three streets. His range here is like kind of capped. He can have like jack x. He can have like <clears throat> six x even. I don't want to bet too big. I want to bet a size that he can call, like find some looser calls on basically because that ace is just going to like brutalize his range. Sometimes it will make him two pair and you can go... <clears throat> for the argument that he's either folding his third pair or he's calling with like two pair or something so why not just go huge that's true by the, by the same token I also expect a guy that's bad 52 38 random fish um, he could actually be a reg that's just super aggro and running super hot come to think of it but anyway I expect this guy to probably be calling 
um, the river just way too much to smaller sizing, not realizing that, that actually means I have less bluffs in my range when I size smaller. Clear call with Ace-9 here, there's no reason to squeeze this when it plays so well in multi-way. You can squeeze all the stuff you're not so happy flatting, again, in the polar model very much here. <clears throat> Nines, I have no idea what happened pre, but it looks like I opened. I'm just going to go ahead and see bet this. I don't want to check call this hand, it's a little bit too vulnerable. Um, what is going on here? Guy donks at me, I think I can actually just... Well... Uh, okay, let's go. It's kind of close. Uh, ace turn. It's a bit small here for value. I'm not going to get too much. Also protect against like gutters and stuff like that. I'm going to bet another street against this fish, just for value. And I, I get it's much better for me against fish if money goes into the pot with me betting rather than them betting. It's now a fold against the shove pretty easily. Uh, ace ten. I'm three betting a lot if I three bet this hand, but I just think this guy is overfolding to 3 bets, he's folding 86% to 3 bets, so over opens, after opens so far. This fish min raises me clear fold with ace-9, he's just obviously made like a straight on the turn, was slow playing a jack on the flop like almost 100% of the time. Whew, take a little breather, I'm gonna play for like another 5 minutes. Is he going into like, I'm gonna 4 bet you every single time you do anything mode? Because he's just decided that I have like way too wide a 3 bet range against him, he's kind of right if that's what he's doing. His 4 bet there is needlessly big, it's like over 3x, he's just giving himself a pretty bad price. He's obviously moving now because he doesn't want to be on my right, which is kind of understandable because I will tear him apart if he's going to fold that much in the long run. He might have been adjusting well there, he might have just had his 4 bet range, who knows. But it's important to note that if I do 3 bet with ace-10 there, offsuit then I am 3 betting a very wide, a lot of combos is a bluff because my value range there is going to be no wider than like Queens plus Ace King, it might even be like Kings plus Ace King suited or something like that. So yeah, I'm definitely very imbalanced there and I'm hoping that he will just continue to fold too much. If he adjusts well then I could be re-exploited and that could be really bad but I'm kind of making an assumption that most people won't that are folding that much so far. It's a kind of small sample though so I might be verging on being too unbalanced there and being too exploitable for my own good. That's very possible, it's something that happens to me sometimes. And this is a clear 3 bet just because I could get squeezed by these guys, especially this one. Um, okay, not super often, I could probably flat ace 9 suited. Um, if this guy was more, like, tighter, then I definitely would. I mean, I probably can anyway, it's close. Like, whether or not I want to flat ace 9 suited there just very much kind of depends on whether I think I'm going to get squeezed very often, because it's clearly good enough to flat against a cutoff opening range from an active player. And if it's good enough to flat, I just 3-bit bluff some weaker stuff. Let's make this clear as well. It's definitely more plus EV in a vacuum to 3-bet the hand, but that poker's not played in a vacuum, and that, especially at regular, this regular table where I will be encountering this guy like consistently over the next 100 hands or whatever. I want to make sure that I have some kind of balance to my strategy, so if a hand's good enough to call, I'd rather do that and use the ones that aren't as my 3-bet bluffs. I've said that like a thousand times. You know what, guys? I'm never going to say this again. That's a lie, I probably will. I'm just so sick of explaining the polar model. You guys probably know it as well, it's probably me just explaining it for absolutely no reason. This guy, like, min 3-bets me. I don't know anything about him, I'm just gonna rip it. Um, sevens is near the bottom of what I would rip in here, and I'm not super thrilled about it, but I think it's, oh, eight, sick. It felt better if it was, like, aces. Like this. This is aces. This is good. Um, gonna 4-bet because it's just important to get all the money in sooner rather than later. I'm going to make it bigger than I normally would as well, because I think a guy like this, his range is just likely to be really nutted here, so it's good to not let him off the hook when he has like ace-king or queens, not let bad textures come out where I don't stack him, get all the money pre-flop basically. It's an exploitative thing, it's not necessarily the best strategy overall, um, but I don't want to be balanced against this guy. He looks so straightforward so far, that's just super plus EV to get all the money in against hands like ace-king as soon as possible. If I flat there, this is so results orientated, but if I flat there and a flop like that comes out, I probably don't win much more, so I think it's a big mistake to flat that squeeze against such a player, but I will see people do it. Sevens was definitely close, I mean it was verging on being too bad to shove, um, calling is not really great because his stack is so short, implied odds are bad, um, but I think sevens is good enough to, to rip in there. He could just be a random fish, one of these button clicker guys, it's just like 
sort of clicking the raise, min raise button with like a really, really wide range or something like that. I open ace 10 here, I get called by a regular, I assume. The avatar is pretty cool, looks like a reggae avatar for sure. I think this hand is too up there in my range to check given I'm going to be c-betting so much air in this spot, so this is going to be a c-bet, queens is a very clear squeeze. I'm going a bit smaller here because stacks are not actually that. I could go to 5 actually, because stacks are shorter. I put more pressure on them with this squeeze size, I don't need to go like huge. Snap it off, a 7 is on tilt. Definitely on tilt. I'll just make a note here um, that he shoves a 7 off after losing big pot. No, he was like 55, but BB's deep, no? Something like that, yeah. So we just took all of that guy's money, which is always fun. That's the thing about poker, you sometimes you get to like bust all people's accounts. You can quote me on that. That's the thing about poker, sometimes you get to bust all people's accounts. I want that on my tombstone. That's my quote. One of my more genius moments, of course. Guys, I'm going to sign off because I've been recording for my requisite amount of time and I need to go and meet my friend for some lunch. So let's play this nine hand first. She's just texted me actually to probably say that she's going to be late as always. Which might mean that I can play for longer. Oh no, she's just talking nonsense. Not going to be late. Sorry guys. If she was going to be late, I'd play for another 10 minutes for you guys. That's my dedication. 6-5 is just about good enough to min open here. Well, that's easily good enough actually, but I should be a bit tighter because this guy's 3 betting a lot. Um, for sure. I'm going to defend against this because he's making it. Well, am I? Mm. Do I know about this guy? Uh, I think I've got enough of an edge that I can defend 6-5. It's definitely like the bottom of my defending range here, though. It could be being over overconfident there, but I think it should be fine. Nines. Uh, I ISO'd, I have the best hand here a lot, there's no reason not to just see that and protect my hand, it's kind of a disaster to give two people um, a free card here on a low board where they're very liable to make the best hand on me if I let them. This guy calls, I'm going to be checking back now, kind of showdown bound. This guy 3 bets to fish, I don't want to like 4 bet and get jacks in by any means, definitely just a clear call. This guy donks, no, C bets the flop, I have terrible equity, I'm just going to fold. Don't have to defend every time when your equity is really bad. I have a better flush draw, no over cards, it's just not enough. And this will just be a check fold, this will be a check back, and this is just awful. Just folding. I could turn this into a bluff and maybe make him fold King 10, Queen 10. Ah, oh, I have so much showdown value though. I beat like all the random other pocket pairs and all the 6x and the 5x. Yeah, I have too much showdown value. If I had less, I'd try and make him fold 10s, but I just beat too many of the hands that he calls flop with. I said I was going to stop and I got distracted. This is a call, by the way. The price here is just incredible. I think it's obviously a call. Um, his range could be any kind of crap. I mean, it's probably like some wide linear thing because he's 3-bit already. Probably something like, I don't know, Broadway's, Pocket Pairs, you name it. I'm getting a great price from in position. I have a huge edge. It's a clear call. Uh, this is kind of close, but I'm going to just check. There are fish who will be check folding all the time here. If he checks a turn, I bet and bet big because he's going to fold ace king. He's, he's king, which is a big part of his range. And I have equity, and if I get down the river, I've built a bigger pot, and I max fold equity by being a bit bigger. He just snap calls. Um, I'm going to assume that his range here has like, got enough king, queen, ace, queen in it for me to bet the river, and I don't need to go too big to make him fold that part of his range. He's not going to fold aces, though. I don't normally advocate bluffing fish, I just think that's a spot where random queen x is just going to be calling me on the turn and just I don't have any showdown value against random king queen ace queen hands. And I think I get enough fold equity just... If I bet that river, as I did, it only needs to work, you know, about sort of 38% of the time or something, and I think I can get that many folds just about, so I think the bluff is fine. Right, I'm actually going to stop recording now. I need to leave the house like five minutes ago. 
Guys, thanks for watching. Please leave me any questions or comments about this video, um, and I hope it's maybe helped shed some light on whether you should play Zoom or not, if you have that option. Until next time, next week when I'll be back with Carl for some more um, for some more high intensity problem solving poker talk. Basically, leave us your suggestions as well if there's anything you want us to see, want us to go through in that video. Bye for now.